Hello students, have you ever noticed what happens when we mix salt in water or when we add oil to water? So I am going to show you right now what happens on mixing salt in water. This is sodium chloride and I am mixing them it in water. And sodium chloride has dissolved in water you will notice. On the other hand, I am taking oil and I am mixing it in water. This is oil in water. Now students you might have noticed, you can see from here oil has formed a separate layer on the surface of water. While this is our sodium chloride container, it is completely dissolved but oil has not dissolved in water. You can see it from here. And the answer lies in a very well known phrase like father like sons. So same thing is applicable in chemistry as well. Like the rule of like dissolves like is applicable to chemistry as well. The compounds of similar nature are miscible with one another. Water. Water is a polar covalent compound. While oil, oil is a non-polar compound. And sodium chloride is an ionic compound which is highly polar in nature. Due to that reason, sodium chloride is miscible with water but oil is not. Most of the covalent compounds have a definite geometry. And this arrangement of atoms depends upon the bond angle present in them and the number of the atoms in them. And the geometry of molecule can be very well described by hybridization or by hybrid orbitals. And the formula for finding hybrid orbitals can be calculated by this equation. Hybrid orbitals are equal to half of number of valence electrons of central atom plus number of surrounding monovalent, atom, monovalent atoms plus negative charge minus positive charge. If after solving this equation answer comes 2, then hybridization is sp with the linear geometry. If answer is 3, then sp2 hybridization with triangular planar geometry. For 4 answer sp3, for 5 answer sp3d, for 6 sp3d2 and for 7 sp3d3. Now let us try to apply this formula to few well known molecules. For example, BeCl2. BeCl2 beryllium belongs to second group and has two valence electrons. So, if we apply the formula half of valence electrons of beryllium plus surrounding monovalent atoms. Chlorine is a monovalent atom. So, we get answer here 2. If answer is 2, hybridization is sp. And sp hybridization means it should have a linear geometry. It means around one beryllium there are two chlorines. And the bond angle between these chlorine is 180. Let us try to see it with the help of pens. You can imagine... This is your beryllium and this is one chlorine and this is one chlorine. Now how shall we arrange these two chlorines around beryllium? This might have been the possible structure. But here if this is the arrangement, electron cloud of this will repel the electron cloud of another. So they have to be furthest away from one another and the possible angle between two chlorine is 180 degree where electron cloud of this chlorine doesn't repel the electron cloud of another and the geometry is called linear. Now let us move on to our next hybridization which is of BCL3. BCL3 boron has three valence electrons and there are three surrounding atoms around boron. So total makes it 6 by 2 or 3 answer. So hybridization comes out to be sp2. If hybridization is sp2, so how the atoms shall be arranged? around boron so that they repel one another the least. Again we can see it with the help of pens. Suppose this is your boron, this is chlorine, chlorine and chlorine. There are three chlorines arranged around boron. This is one inner circle you can say. Let us divide this circle into three equal parts. First part, second part, third part. So the angle between bor chlorine, boron and chlorine is 120 degree, 120, 120. So they are arranged at 120 degree away from one another. So there are three surrounding chlorine. Now if we join the imaginary line, if we join through imaginary line, it will look like a triangular planar shape. So the shape of BCL3 is triangular planar in nature. Now let us move on to our next molecule, methane. CH4. In CH4, there are four valence electrons of carbon and four surrounding monovalent atoms of hydrogen are there. And answer comes out to be four. Means it should have sp3 hybridization. In sp3 hybridization, the arrangement can be anything. But 
the arrangement is in such a manner that the electron cloud of hydrogen and carbon repel one another the least and bond angle between them is 109 degree 28 minute let us have a look with the help of pens imagine these are your four pens we have tried to show it through the with the help of pens this is your carbon this is hydrogen hydrogen and hydrogen and this is also hydrogen the bond angle between carbon and hydrogen is 109 degree 28 minute every bond angle is 109 degree 28 minute and this shape is three dimensional geometry called tetrahedral geometry now if we try to count the number of 109 degree 28 minute bonds then let us see starting from here this angle from here is 109 degree 28 minute one is this angle first angle this is second angle and this is your third angle three are here one is in between this fourth angle is between this fifth angle is between this and the sixth angle is between this so there are six angles which are lying at 109 degree 28 minutes this is about sp3 hybridization with tetrahedral geometry let's move on to our next molecule which is pcl5 Phosphorus belongs to 15th group and has 5 valence electrons and the number of surrounding monovalent atoms are also 5. So if we solve this equation, answer comes out to be 5 and 5 means sp3d hybridization. There are 5 hybrid orbitals. Now how these 5 hybrid orbitals should be arranged in space so that they repel one another the least and the possible angle between them is Trigonal bipyramidal geometry, you can see it from here. Let us have a look how these pens are arranged. Consider phosphorus to be in the center and these are chlorines, chlorines and chlorine and chlorine are here. These chlorines which are lying on horizontal axis are also called equatorial chlorines. There are three equatorial bonds and the chlorine which are on the top and the bottom are called axial chlorines. Now if you look at the bond angle between equatorial and equatorial, this bond angle is 120. As you can see, there is one inner circle. If I divide this inner circle into three equal parts, first part, second part and third part. If you are dividing into three equal parts, so every angle is coming out to be 120 degree. And the angle between axial and equatorial is 90 degree. 90 degree. And the angle between axial and axial is 180. Now, if we have to count how many angles are at 90 degree away from one another, so you can see, Three angle from the top, one, two, three, and three angle from the bottom. So there are six angles in total which are at 90 degree away from one another. Now if we try to join them imaginary lines, so it would look like a face. One face will be formed from here, one face will be formed from here, and a triangular bipyramidal geometry. A pyramid would be formed whose base is a triangle. One pyramid from the top and one pyramid at the bottom will be formed with whose base is triangular. You can see it from this as well. This is your triangular bipyramidal geometry in which these are the chlorines. Equatorial chlorines 1, 2, 3 and these are also your chlorines. They are present at axial and phosphorus is lying in the center of this trigonal bipyramidal geometry. Now let us move on to our next geometry or next hybridization which is of SF6. In case of SF6, sulfur belongs to 16th group and has 6 valence electrons around it and fluorine are monovalent in nature. So we will add 6 electrons of fluorine. So half of 12 makes out to be 6 and answer is sp3d2 hybridization. If the answer is sp3d2 hybridization, how atoms should be arranged so that they repel one another the least and the possible arrangement you can see with the help of pens, this is the possible arrangement. Four pens have to be arranged in such a manner that if we join them together, they are forming one square, these four pens. And one pen has to be kept at the top and another pen has to be kept at the bottom. Let us, I am not able to hold all of them together. So let us imagine we are holding them in a straight line, all of them in a straight line. So you can see, now although there are 6 pens or 6 positions, but if we join them through imaginary lines, it will form one face from here. One face will be formed from here, two faces. 
one face will be formed from here three faces and one face will be formed from here so four faces are going to be formed on the top likewise if you look at the bottom four faces are going to be formed at the bottom so in totality there are eight faces and the base is a square and if you join all of them at the top one pyramid you can see one pyramid is at the top and one pyramid is at the bottom so this geometry is also called square bipyramidal geometry or called octahedral geometry you can see it with the help of this imaginary figure this is your octahedral geometry there are four faces one two three four on the top and four faces are at the bottom so in totality there are eight faces that's why this geometry is called octahedral or you can call it square by pyramidal geometry now this formula can be applied to cations and anions as well for example ammonium ion this formula for finding hybridization let us apply it for ammonium ion half of valence electrons of nitrogen are 5 plus surrounding monovalent atoms are 4 and positive charge is subtracted because positive charge indicates loss of electron so positive has to be subtracted and answer comes 8 by 2 again 4 and hybridization is sp3 if hybridization is sp3 it means it has to be in tetrahedral nature so ammonium ions are arranged all hydrogens are arranged on the tetrahedral corners of it regular tetrahedral geometry so you can see ammonium ions are like this so one tetrahedral geometry this is ammonium ion okay students that was all about hybridization i hope you must have understood few points about hybridization thank you very much